Hello there, and welcome to Success as a Student, a skills podcast for students and anyone who wants to develop key skills that will help them in being successful. My name is Alexander Wood. I create online skills content for the University of Derby. Outside of work, I'm a trustee, a chairperson of a youth group, and the University of Derby Graduate of the Year. In this series, we focus on how you can develop skills that will help you to succeed in your university study, your career, and in your personal development, all by interviewing experienced University of Derby staff and successful students. In today's episode, we interview Eliza Petrascu about her reflections from her time at university. Eliza discusses the mindset that she held at the start of her time at university and her mindset towards the university now that she's graduated. We also discuss learning your limits and going to the world with an open mind. So hello Eliza and welcome to the Success of the Student podcast. So first of all, would you like to introduce yourself to the listeners? Hello, uh, my name is Eliza and I went to Derby University. I graduated in 2017. It was a um, just fickle undergraduate law degree, um, nothing, nothing fancy. And um, ever since I have been working as a paralegal. I worked in uh, different fields, uh, property, uh, IP, and now I am in dispute resolution. So thank you, Eliza, for coming on today and being willing to share your own experiences and reflections on your time at university. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, so I'd first like to start talking about your university journey, so from when you first started. So when you first started at university, what was your mindset? I really wanted to get the most out of it. Um, I moved to the UK when I was 15 and then I went straight into year 11, which was very scary. And I started quite late as well because um, I don't know, there was some sort of error in the system. Mm. And um, I had to do pretty much two years worth of GCSEs in, in one year. And that, that was quite a lot. And I didn't come away with the best kind of record um, grades. And, um, um, you know, ever since then, it was kind of my, my goal to do as best as I can once I figured my way around the educational system so i really wanted to make the most of it when i got to university mm. so you want to make the most so that's pretty much exactly how i thought i'd not done very well either i came to university and had a similar mindset i wanted to make the most of university so with that mindset then what did you do when you started so the university was very good at putting on um, different events, career talks, etc., just anything of that sort. And I pretty much signed up to as, as many as I possibly could. Um, any, I, yeah, I chose to do something else over, over that or yeah, that's essentially, yeah, did everything. Fair enough. So everything. So when you're trying to find these everything events that you got involved in, how did you find them and how did you no oh how did you choose to get involved in them okay so um a lot of the times um lecturers would send around announcements hmm. and it was always worth asking them as well if they didn't advertise it you know necessarily definitely and i guess i did something very similar i just tried to take the most of the opportunities and there are lots of opportunities in your course yeah it's not, it's not just our degree with within law that has lots of opportunities there's lots of opportunities and lots of courses just about noticing them i guess and the key thing i, I think i found was just checking my my mail and just seeing the emails that i got i don't know if you found opportunity through similar ways through emails and such yeah, absolutely um there were i'm not sure what the layout is now but um you do or whatever yeah. it might be called now um used to have like an announcement board um, with different events that are happening in university and freshers is always a good time to find out what other you know uh, degrees or clubs are doing and but yeah just keep an eye out for emails um it doesn't have to be a lot like you said uh, for example i think in my second year i went to a photography exhibition at uh, the marquee in campus um that's you know photography is one of my passions so i thought well why not mm -hmm. um so just because it didn't relate to law necessarily it doesn't mean you don't have to go to it um and I'm not sure what um, what happens now in the second year of the law degree, but um, we had to put together um, some sort of CPD folder where you have to record um, any personal development, any sort of time that you would spend as a trainee, for example. So we had to keep record of that. And actually the photography thing was CPD, um, like a class is networking. You know, you never know who you're going to meet. So yeah, definitely emails from the university, any sort of notice, notice boards, societies 
any yeah <laughs> just keep keep your ear open yeah so lots of opportunities do come to you especially when you're starting university in your first year i as you just mentioned their societies um, they advertise a lot and you'll get told about societies for your lecture but there's often an academic society for your course there's often societies out there for your passions as well and at the start of university it can be really good to get involved with these to make networks but also to start learning transferable skills and such and also to start getting some experience so the other thing i wanted to highlight from what you said is about how you can find out through lectures through emails all the opportunities that are available and also to be able to physically talk to people and ask hi i've got this interest what is do you know of anything out there because they could potentially signpost you and the final thing i wanted to highlight was that what the opportunities are that you get take on they don't have to relate to your course um they can often be transferable and actually those opportunities i found are the ones that help you to stand out uh, so did you get involved in anything that didn't necessarily relate to law other than this photography expedition that you felt has helped you since i think i did go to the gaming society a few times mm -hmm. so that's something that kind of it is great in the way that it took your mind off things, but it also showed that you're a human being, you know, this whole tag that, you know, you have to show your human side and it's not all about work, work, work. Um, so that, I think that's one of the things that I did, but it, I suppose it wasn't necessarily something that really wowed everyone, but it was just, you know, it's one of those nice details that if someone that you meet happens to like that, well, that's that's even better that you have something to talk about. So that's the way I saw it. But it didn't necessarily make me sparkle, if that, if you know what I mean. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I think it's just nice to go to society's things because it's nice to, as well as learning things and getting experience, it's also nice to make friends. And it's a good way of finding your place at university is being involved with more than just your lectures. I don't know if you'd agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it is, it's, it's three years. It, it is honestly, it is a great time, even though it doesn't feel like it when, when you are in the middle of it, but, um, having that time to really explore, to really find out what you like, you know, do you like the academic life? Are you more hands-on kind of person or is that the right course for you? I think it's such an amazing time to learn that about you. So I think it's definitely important to not just look at your course specifically unless you absolutely know that that's you know what you want but i would still recommend to get out there and go to things that you wouldn't ordinarily i think it's a great time to do that mm, i totally agree uh, early on you mentioned about how um you take every opportunity you could find did you ever take on any opportunities that scared you a little bit yeah absolutely i think most of them did scare me um and it, everything was was new wasn't it and law is seen as super scary and um yeah uh, you kind of feel like oh you don't know what you're doing etc so yeah every opportunity i did take on was quite scary um but uh, again that mindset you know i didn't want to let myself down in a way and that's not to say to be harsh on yourself that's completely the opposite message but more of um you know that's your goal let's see how we can achieve it so yeah, that's what I had in mind when I approached um, scary kind of, what's it called, um, events and um, experience. I just reminded myself, well, I'm here to learn. I'm here to do this. So approach it with as much positivity as you can. Um, it doesn't mean you have to be 100% confidence, just as much as you can muster if that, <laughs> if that um, can help. Yeah, definitely. I I still find I still remember even going to the social events of societies. I remember being so nervous, especially if I didn't know many people there and networking, and almost any of even careers events that I went to when I started, because often other students didn't necessarily want to go on them. I just I went along and I just sat on my own and I was just so nervous. But doing those things helps to make you stand out and it helps to make you better and helps you learn and so on so it's definitely worth it and definitely worth making yourself scared to do it i don't know about you but have you ever did you ever feel that an event that you felt scared going to do you, have you ever felt like any of those have not been worth it no i think every event i've been to was really good um and i think it's, it's also, your mindset also plays a part in that um for example i think so one of the a law clinic experiences that I did. I'm not sure if that still happens at the university. They started but... it again. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I did that. I signed up to it. I don't think very many people did. Again, it's super scary because you're working with a solicitor and, you know, students come in for genuine advice or whoever, you know, I'm not sure who the audience is now. And, um, 
I, you know, I, I was super, ner- super nervous, but at the end of it, you know, the sales would turn around and said, you know, you did, you did a really good job. And like, I thought I wouldn't get anything out of it. I just thought, oh gosh, I'm going to be terrible. <laughs> but, you know, I actually got some good feedback. I, I really didn't expect that. And, um, you know, I walked out of there thinking, you know, I'm really glad I did that. And, um, for example, one of the networking events, I think it was called uh, Women in Business. It wasn't necessarily like law, but just, mm. you know, any any um, women in business um, involved in like local retailers, um, like boutique gyms. I think it was Cat Williams uh, in Derby and a really inspirational. I, I, it was great listening to her. And at that event, I met a fr- uh, well, someone that now is a good friend. Mm. And she was running her own business and, you know, I got to you know, see that and help with it. So, you know, it's amazing. I made a friend by just, you know, going to an event that I didn't expect to get much out of. And ironically, um, so that was my third year of university. So at that event, Women in Business, um, I had an interview for work experience at a local firm. And the partner that was going to interview me was at that event. <laughs> That, that was incredible. And the person that I made friends with at the event, um, who's my friend now, she knew that partner. And then we went up to her and introduced myself. And I said, well, you know, nice meeting you and I'll see you next week. <laughs> and again, that sparked a conversation. Like, wait, wait, wait a minute. Like, would you mean see you next week? <laughs> and then again, that was a really good introduction. Like mm. I did uh, that's one in a, I don't know, I'm not really good with statistics, but like one in a million, yeah. but that was, uh, that was a crazy experience. So you never know what's going to happen. And it was amazing. Cause when I did go to the interview, I walked in thinking, Oh, Hey, how was your event last time? <laughs> you know, we just had so much in common already and it was absolutely amazing. So I think, it's, yes, <laughs> it's just opportunities to open doors and don't go to the event with the expectation that you'll get that, but it may help. I, I remember there was one event that I went to, which is a networking event. Um, it was run by an organization that I knew I was going to apply for in the near future. So it had nothing to do with law either. And I was like, actually, I'm going to go to this. And I met the senior partner who I think runs the, is one of the people who runs the firm now. And I spoke to him, met with him. I went to two of them, met with him, both of them. And then I had a job interview at their firm. I didn't get the job in the end. But I remember there was this really powerful moment. I was in the middle of the interview and he walked past, stopped and walked in to say hi to me. And how powerful is that? In the middle of your interview, I didn't get the job. The senior partner from the firm, who I think was on like the like governance board of the organization, stops his what he's doing to say hi to you. That's quite powerful. And I feel like that would have given me some credit. Obviously, I didn't get the job. I wasn't right for the job. Definitely wasn't right for it. That's why I didn't get the job. But if it was borderline, that could be the things that help you open the doors. And so going to these events can really, really help. Fully agree. And yeah, I mean, you know, sorry about for, about the job, but it must have felt super amazing At just having that happen to you. Yeah. Um, you know, just the person walking past going, hey. <laughs> and I fully agree. I think we're going to touch on this a little bit later. Um, but it, that's, um, you know, just being open to anything and people and not having an expectation as to their reaction or their response to what you're saying or what you're doing, etc. cetera. And, um, you know, just treating people like you would like the person next to you um so yeah yeah we can talk about that now actually so yeah i think that's really really important um going to these events can really help you to find opportunities uh, and also to make opportunities in the future that you were saying so what we're talking about here is that going to opportunities to put yourself out there can help with networking which is basically making contacts that can help you in the future to find opportunities and so on But what benefits have you found from networking other than random chance meeting someone who's a best friend and then random chance meeting someone who's interviewing you the next week? I think the importance of networking, you know, even if it's in a law setting or not, I think it just gives you the opportunity to develop yourself and you know, is hearing different people's ideas, something that you probably never thought of. And you think, actually, I really like that opinion. I like that view. And you get to go away and explore Mm -hmm. it further. And you develop yourself as a person, as a professional. So I think that really helped me. Um, It just gives you ideas pretty much on top of, you know, potentially meeting someone, uh, you know, to network with or a friend or et cetera, your your future interviewer. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, definitely i think ideas are really good and also there's an opportunity there to actually pitch your ideas to people and see what they think i pitch loads of ideas and people are like, that's a good idea you should do that and i'm like yeah 
go for it. Um, and also, people might go, that's a terrible idea. And then you can either listen to them or go, I've never met you before. I'm going to ignore that. But then maybe actually you should have listened. Who knows? Um, I completely agree with that as well. Um, so like you said, just, you know, showing your ideas, et cetera, just, just talking to someone and sharing your opinion. And if they go, well, I don't really agree with that. Then, you know, c- carry on that conversation, understand why, you know, why have they said no? Or why have they said yes? Mm. So I think it's, it's fantastic. I think we should continue to develop our ideas and our thoughts about, you know, everything. Mm. I think it can be really reflect good for reflection as well, because you can meet people who are in the area that you want to go into. You can ask them questions. You can say, say to them, face value like hi i want to work in your area what's it like ask them all the questions especially if there's someone who is a bit down to earth and honest they can give you the honest insight into what their area is and you never know they could even give you experience i agree um and yeah it's great to get insight from the people that you will work with or work for etc and um but for example if it doesn't match yours don't be disheartened because often in times you know people say oh i don't like it or it's not you know it's not that great or you know whatever response they might say that maybe doesn't match yours and um, so i wouldn't I, i'd take that with a pinch of salt you know I don't agree. don't take it don't take it too seriously because you'll walk away thinking oh my gosh i've made a huge mistake i shouldn't have done this degree so just yeah just see it as just an opinion and that's why I go to more networking events, see what other experiences people have had working in the law or any other, you know, profession, because they'll make you build your own judgment. Mm. And it can also help broaden your horizons as well, because you can find out about new areas that actually you might not have thought of and make contacts that could um, make you realize, actually, this is an area that I want to go to, or maybe I want to work with them in the future. Maybe I could have them mentor me and things like that. Who knows? Uh, But we've been talking so far about formal networking events, which are like events where you go to where there's lots of people. um, But there's lots of people there who are all there for the purposes of networking and it's very formalized and so on. But there are other types of networking, as we've been discussing earlier. We were talking when we first got onto the point about how taking opportunities can be networking. So, for example, we talked about careers events earlier. Well, we've got a program currently where we have careers events that are run, but the person who runs them probably has a career in the area and you could ask them the questions just like that and network with them there um have you have you found any benefit from networking outside of formal networking events yeah so definitely careers events um like you said the people that work in those fields will have had some sort of connection to your undergraduate degree so for example two of the ones that i worked with in the career services um did law degrees and realized it's not for them so again that's that's also a very good um perspective and yeah for example like talking to the library staff um they've got degrees and they know kind of what they wanted from it or didn't want from it. So like anyone, yeah. Um, so we had career services and definitely societies and careers events. And yeah, again, sometimes it can it can get quite tricky involving yourself in, in constant kind of work and, and, and work and university stuff. So I would say don't, don't target them specifically and I don't know if someone's having a pizza night uh, in halls or whatever, <laughs> whatever they do, you know, that we used to have that. We used, oh yeah. I think it was a film society. We watched uh, Mulan together and St. Peter Hilton court. I think I can't remember what it was, but yeah, we went That's to watch right. Mulan, Mulan and we all sang together to, you know, all this wonderful songs that Mulan has <laughs> taught, you know, the nineties generation. Um, so yeah, just random stuff like that. It was really fun. And, you know, that's networking. Um, I think networking has such a harsh tag and quite a scary one. It's essentially just going and talking to people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, it's just like, when you go out with your friends, that's networking, you know, that, that friend of yours could be a partner one day. <laughs> and so can you, <laughs> so, exactly. you know, so definitely, yeah, societies, yeah, anyone. For example, I had friends that um, were doing, I think it was archaeology or something along the lines of that degree, um, so that they went to different sort of society events. So I think, yeah, just make friends with anyone that are not necessar- necessarily on your um, course. I met a lot of people at different courses, yeah, by going to societies or um, I used to work in campus i used to work at subway <laughs> so a lot of the students there were from different courses so i get to got to meet them and go to the events that they went to and it was great mm. 
I agree. Um, I agree with everything you've said so far. Uh, early on, you mentioned a phrase, um, going to, to the world with an open mind. Um, what does that phrase mean to you? Um, if I can just ask you that quite bluntly. So it, it does tie back into, like, for example, the way you approach networking, just, you know, it may be a bad experience. You may, it, it may be go terribly wrong. You know, I'm sure it won't, but in your mind, it probably will feel like that. Or it could be the most amazing time you've had. Um, so I think going in with a, expecting the worst and the best, that's what having an open open mindset means to me. Um, just that any, any option is pretty much a 50-50 chance of, of, you know, either or happening. And um, just, again, treating people like your equals. You know, they're not above, they're not below. And, you know, being open to the opinions that they have. You know, often enough, for example, if you say something and, you know, someone reacts differently, you think, oh, gosh, that's the wrong opinion. I shouldn't have said that. That shouldn't be your reaction. Um, if, you know, or you think, oh, I don't agree with that. Why? Well, by open a mind, I mean, it, you know, process it, think about it, debate it even further. I think it should be more of a learning opportunity rather than someone taking sides. So that's what I would mean by an open mind. It's just, yeah, being completely open to what's in front of you. It doesn't necessarily mean that needs to sway you. Um, you know, it can change your opinion, you know, which is great, or you can still have the same one, which is also fine. But as long as you give an equal attention to the thing that's happened or the thing in front of you, I think, you know, that is, for me, that's the best way to grow and learn yeah. more. I can see parallels between that and growth mindset, which is something we talked about as a skill on this podcast, which is all about being willing to learn, and that's similar in that sense. But also, um, I guess it's been open to, uh, being open to things happening that are good and being open to what could happen and not ex necessarily expecting that if you go to someone and say, oh, do you have work experience that I could go on? Or if you speak to someone who's professional and ask them for something in particular that they can do that, but then be open that that could happen but not necessarily expecting it to. And I guess it applies to like applying for jobs too. Don't expect you'll get every job you apply for because maybe you'll end up in heartbreak that way, but just anticipate that it could happen and still go for it even if you don't necessarily feel that you're able to get it. Obviously, there's limits to that. So don't necessarily apply to be a CEO when you've just finished university. And I mean, if you really want to go for it, but you may expect there's probably a smaller chance of getting it but um doesn't mean that some jobs that you may not be able to get them for example uh but the same with networking and speaking to people don't expect don't expect anything either way and just hope i guess does that does that work with does that align with what you're saying yeah yeah very much just deal with whatever deal with whatever comes your way um whether it's bad or whether it's good and if it's good, then great. <laughs> but if it's bad, you learn from it. You know, if you, for example, like if you had a bad networking experience this one time, you know, there was no one there you could talk to, or you just kind of felt a little bit awkward. It's okay, you know, just reflect on it. Say maybe, you know, was I not feeling good that day? You know, was I tired? You know, just kind of reflect and say, oh, maybe next time, you know, I won't go to an evening one or go to, you know, mid morning or et cetera. So, you know, work around that. Like, don't be hard on yourself. Um, so yeah, that's what I mean about, yeah, having an open mind is accepting what comes to you and yeah, see it as a learning experience and not as a way of being negative towards yourself. Mm, definitely. Be kind to yourself it is hugely important. Um, so, so far we've talked about, uh, coming to university with a mindset of trying to take opportunities and get the most out of university, going to the world with an open mind and also going to, uh, approaching networking with in, in a very open way and some advice for that but doing all these things at university and as you said earlier is saying yes to everything or as much as possible is there ever a risk of burning out by doing that and taking that approach so uh, doing a lot of these things and running around can lead to burnout and um it's i mean it's something that every everyone goes through you know when you try to do so much it, it can be overwhelming uh, for a number of reasons so for example um exposing yourself to so many new things you know you're moving from home you're meeting new people uh you're going you're on your own doing all these things and going to uni and, uh, <laughs> that's the reaction everyone would have so you know, trying to pile on so much will burn me out a little bit. And I think burning out, you know, the word, well, the phrase itself has a bit of a stigma. And I think it mm. pretty, to me, it just means 
you're a bit tired <laughs> and that's, <laughs> that's, I feel that's, too. That's, that's pretty much it and um so the way i lead sweat for example it's it, it means so if you reach that point you know you kind of feel like oh i don't want to do this um it kind of is starting to show that you've overloaded yourself a little bit and it's i think that it's when it gets to a point where you should maybe reevaluate and maybe decide what's really important for me at this time you know uh, if there's a for example a networking event think to yourself you know have i been to a few so far you think yeah i've been to like five it's okay if i miss one you know if you're really tired just give yourself that break and don't beat yourself up by not going to it you know i found myself in those situations quite a lot you know where you think oh what if this was the opportunity that you know could have landed me this or whatever like again that's not going to help that's not going to help you rest Mm. and so that's what leads to burnout it's putting too much pressure on yourself and you know both by doing the task and then feeling guilty by not doing it for example so you're not giving yourself a break at all and um so yeah, it very easily could happen mm. um when you were trying to do everything <laughs> Yeah, definitely. It's happened to me. Um, it happens to almost everyone I've spoken to. But it's a point about learning it when it happens to you. And then, as you said, reflecting on it. and Or you said reviewing. Um, as you said, re- re-evaluating um, your circumstances and what you can do to make yourself less tired and less burnt out. Uh, sometimes it's, when you're a student, it tends to be one-off events more, unless you've got like a proper full, unless you're working at the same time. So often it's easier to manage. Earlier on, you mentioned the social worker courtroom experience, which is actually was the time when I experienced my burnout because I did a bunch of cases over a few days in the middle of doing extracurricular activities, having lots of assignment deadlines and having lots of things going on. And I, I was just burned out. And that was a temporary matter because of the fact that everything I was doing was temporary and one-off. So it was very easy for me to reflect on that and go, okay, how can I manage that better to not have the situation? But from my perspective, if you've got lots of things that are permanently on that are burning you out normally, then proper decisions have to be made more more so than I won't allow myself to get into this position in the future. You may defaultly be in that position, I guess. So I guess that leads to the question, which is how can you avoid burnout happening? So it goes back to reevaluating the, the situations and um, reminding yourself of your goals. So first of all, if you don't have any, maybe just kind of think about what do you want to achieve in the next few years, etc. Nothing too crazy like, oh, I want to achieve this job. And yeah, <laughs> so nothing too grand. Um, so for example, with university, if you're just starting, you think you're, you know, you're there, you want to get your degree, you want to do, you want to learn as much as you can from it and get a good uh, classification at the end of it. So that's number one. That should be the first priority. Mm is making sure that you go to your lectures, all of them, and um, starting your essay research and exam prep early because that's your main goal. That's why you're there. And um, so for me, number two was um, was work. I had to like basically sustain myself financially. So that was number two. So I had to fit in time for that. And then three was uh, network you know, experience, networking, et cetera. Um, so yeah those first two came first and if i had a spare time then um go to any events um but for example sometimes i did it the other way around you know um, experience or events came in number two because i needed it at the time or is a really good experience like the social worker courtroom experience that we just talked about that's something that you know yeah. probably happens once a year you know it's crazy like that i was sacrificed for you know i'll i'll say no to work i'll go to this and so yeah prioritizing um and uh being okay with that decision you know um so again the fear of missing out or you know i'm doomed if i don't go to this like no that's fine there's plenty more um but if something that you know you really want to go to then make that decision and be okay with the consequences yeah so definitely prioritizing um because you can get lost because you think you know i have to work because i haven't you know got enough money for this and that and but wait a minute i'm you know i lost track of my uni assignments and again it's just it's yeah it's gonna not gonna let not gonna lead um to anything good so mm. prioritize i guess it's just totally about balancing everything and working out the priorities so um some opportunities may be so amazing like you said that you might have to even miss you might have to say you know to work if that's a possibility or you might have to say no you might have to miss a lecture and catch up on it i remember there was this amazing opportunity for me to get a qualification that happened and meant i missed one lecture i just spoke to the lecturer told them i couldn't make it and 
then watch the recording back, uh, and then that was okay. I didn't miss out on much. I got a commercial. Cinema. I got. I went to this amazing event in Birmingham. It was really good, worth my time. And then I gained skills that I could then use and help with my degree as well. So it's about balancing and weighing that up in your head a bit. Um, obviously, I say I agree with you. Prize number one of university is getting your degree, but then it's about balancing that up. For me, it was can I get what can I do to get a first class degree whilst making sure I've got the time to do other things. It was the question I asked myself. Um, so other than what we've said so far, do you have any other advice for avoiding burnout? Again, um, on the um, prioritizing task, um, tasks um, is being yeah quite strict with the time. So, for example, I used to hold a diary and I literally used to plan no no not very strictly hour by hour, but I blocked out that time for it and I blocked out time for maybe catching up, like you said, on a lecture that you didn't attend that day. So it's making sure that that priority is being maintained as a priority. And the other thing is fitting in time to for you, for just yourself. Um, and I think that should be scheduled as well. So, mm. for example, you know, this evening, I'm just going to watch, I don't know, some sort of series and just do nothing. And yeah, that's completely fine. And um, do not beat yourself up about it. And honestly, do schedule it. I know it sounds crazy. No one should always schedule, oh, you know, watch Netflix. <laughs> but it really, A, it gives you something to look forward to. And, you know, if you carried out all your other tasks, you feel really good about it. Be like, yeah, I, I deserve this. You know, I did really well today. So A, it's something to look forward to. And it's uh, just as important as you going to an event that you promised you'd go to. Um, so yeah, schedule in time for fun as well. Yeah, I think that's actually probably the biggest thing I did to avoid burnout, other than planning things apart so that they were not, not everything happened at once and was everything was more spread. I think that's the biggest thing is giving yourself time for fun. Every night, I'd, I'd stop work at 9 p.m., except for, like, really bad assignments, but then I would have days off afterwards uh, to recover from the burnout that would happen. Um, I would always stop at 9 p.m. and say, okay, now I'm going to have fun for an hour, and then I'm going to go to bed. And that's how I got rid of uh, over burnout. And it was a consistent appointment, and then it just works. Yeah, I agree. Definitely. Definitely need that time off and uh, make it consistent. You know, don't uh, spend a whole semester churning work and then, oh, I'm going to take a week off because you're back at doing how many months of work, work, work. And yeah, just just have something at least once a week um, to not overwhelm yourself in the long run. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like we said, 9 p.m. stop date or Saturdays, I don't do this. So, yeah, that's uh, those are my go to's. Just something to look forward to. I think it's really, really important. So I think that bounds off the main substantive part of the podcast. And and so what I'd like to do now is I'd like to talk. To, I'd like to ask you one final question, which is a question that I ask every single person who comes on this podcast, which is, what advice do you have for someone who wants to find their version of success as a student? Whoa, <laughs> that's a that's a heavy question. So your version of success. I think spending time on what you want to achieve. Um, it doesn't have to be grand, you know, like we've spoken about. It doesn't have to be, oh, I want to be Celeste in you know, five years or whatever. Um, it could be just as easy as, you know, I want to do really well in land law or EU law or, you know, all my subjects this year. Um, or, I don't know, getting a good grade in this paper or, yeah, anything like that is success. You know, it's your success. You set out to do that and uh, you accomplished it and that's your success uh, someone else's could be very different you know and so yeah very very much define your goals no matter how small um, and yeah start very small um, and I think yeah having a yeah five-year plan but then how do you get there break it down into small little steps Definitely. Uh, I think there's some really good advice. Work out what your goals are and work out what you can do to go towards them. So, yeah, thank you for your advice so far and thank you for taking the time out of your day to uh, complete this interview. Uh, I really appreciate everything you've said and hopefully the audience uh, feel inspired and uh, feel like you've helped them. Well, I, I hope any of this helps and, um, yeah, I hope you feel empowered <laughs> to go on and take on the world. <laughs> so, yeah, no, thanks very much. Thanks again to Eliza for sharing her advice and reflections from her time at university. Here are some of the key highlights that I've picked out from her interview. First, Eliza saw her time at university as an opportunity to show the world who she was and to develop herself. From the start, she started getting involved where she could 
both in ways that were very relevant to her law degree, and those that were a little bit different, such as getting involved in the game society, and going to networking events for areas that were different to law. The second key point is that whilst you should get involved at university, if you take every opportunity and fill your calendar, you may find yourself getting burnt out. Therefore, Eliza gave some really good advice for this, which included organising your schedule so that you have enough time to focus, have fun, and maintain a positive mental health. If you ever find that you're doing too much, then don't be afraid of taking a step back. There are lots of guidance on what you should do when you feel burnt out on the internet, and I've included some links in the description of the podcast. The final highlight is to go to the world with an open mind. Eliza's mindset is similar to the growth mindset that we discussed earlier on in the series, and her mindset focuses on how you should be open to change and changing your goals. Eliza also noted that her mindset helped her to talk to people with fancy job titles like, well, just people. And I think this is a really good tip for networking, especially when you do it with the right people who you want to make connections with. This episode was brought to you by the University of Derby Skills Team. Production, episode planning and editing was completed by Alexander Wood. Thanks to Stephen Plant for creating the amazing graphics and for balancing the audio. And to Lily Kent for transcribing the series. Thanks also go to Natalia Kodalavar and Naomi Bowers Joseph for giving feedback and helping in the planning of the episodes. Thank you very much for listening.